What's going on, Seth, man? Um, It's fight week in Myanmar. Did you ever think that you would ever say that in your lifetime? You know, I learned a long time ago that trying to predict where this fight game will take you is, uh, you know, I, I would have never predicted it took me to all the other places I've been to, let alone, let alone here. So I'm not surprised, but I am very, uh, I'm having a good time here. All the people are very nice. I can't wait to enjoy more of the food, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> It's a, it's you know everyone's been really polite and it's been a really good trip so far. When you landed in the country and started to go through the streets, you know, what was your initial reaction to everything? Uh, you know, I always try to you know, I always look at people for how they react to you, you know, and everyone here is smiling and everyone's polite and um you know, I was just kind of checking it out. And then and then I started, I was asking my wife, I said, man, you think that, I think they got some probably some poisonous snakes here. And then I looked up the poisonous snake list. I was like, whoa. <laughs> you know, like, but but uh, it was really nice, man. Like, um, I, it was it was definitely a different culture. But, uh, it, you know, parts of it look a lot like Mexico. And, and I've spent a lot of time in Mexico. Arizona's right next to Mexico in the United States. And, you know, I love Mexico. And all, all the people are always real nice down there, too. So it reminded me a little bit of Mexico. Some parts of it. What is the buzz like down there right now? You know, you're you're going through fight week, of course. People are probably, are they recognizing you, you know, in the hotel or in the streets? Yeah, you could definitely, they're definitely recognizing me, but they're, uh, they're very polite and they're very, you know, they give, they're not really in, uh, in your face or, uh, they're just really nice. You know, everyone says hi and everyone kind of talks to you a little bit. And, you know, some people, there's a little bit of a language barrier, but other than that, um, everyone's been really polite and, you know, we, we've had a great time. Everyone's been really nice to everyone that I've, my, my wife and my coach as well. Let's go back to before this fight was all put together, you know, did you know about Lethway or did you know about Dave LeDuc before you signed the contract? You know, I, I, I look up whoever they ask me to fight, um, you know, especially in a different sport, but I've been wanting to do like a kickboxing match, you know, or, you know, whatever kickboxing Muay Thai. Um, and I, I still want to get a pro boxing match in. Um, and this just kind of fell in my lap and I had open time and it was something new and it was something that, you know, I was excited to try and, you know, what better opportunity than to step in and fight one of the best in that particular sport. So I was just kind of thinking on the lines of like, when I started in MMA, you know, the guys we had before me, like the, what, what made MMA so special? And what made people, it grabbed people so much, I believe, were the people that built this sport, like the Chuck Liddells, um, the Don Fries, the Randy Gators, the Sakurabas, you know, all those guys over in Pride, like, they fought. Like, when they fought, when they, when they, fought, they fought. Like, they didn't point fire, fight a lot. Even though Don Fry could take a lot of dudes down, that dude will stand up and throw down with Godzilla. Like, he does not care, you know, and, and, and... I, I kind of always, uh, you know, obviously there's smarter ways you can do things and people have learned a lot and the sports a lot, evolved a lot since then. But I thought that's what, what made it so good. And if you look back in, um, in boxing, you know, back what made boxing so great was, you know, the best fighters fought each other, you know, and there was no like cat and mouse game. There was no, well, this guy's not good for me right now in my career and that's not enough money to fight this guy. And there, there was that, that whole thing. It was like, Hey, like, okay, I don't have nothing going on. You don't have nothing going on. We might as well fight. And that's just kind of on the lines. I, I thought about this, like, Hey man, like, you know, I enjoy competing. I'm healthy. Let's go, let's go see what, let's go see what it's all about. Let's go put our skills to the test and see who's best. And that's what I'm doing. Dave LeDuc, he's undefeated in that way. He's considered the king of Lethway. His fights are all online. You can watch them. When you go through his film, 
you know, what goes through your mind about his skill set? Well, he's good. He's good in areas that other people aren't good on in, you know, in my opinion, he, he's good in some great areas that people haven't really been good at or even been good at in recent history anyway maybe back in the day when people when headbutting was legal and they didn't have not everyone had a cell phone or a way to put it on youtube um he's good in a gray area you know so it's kind of hard to get ready for guys like that meaning if there's nobody that's good at that kind of thing how do you even get somebody to train for something like that so it's more of a we think this is going to work and we're going to go put our defense for this out there and see what happens. You know, um, that was more a line like, uh, you know, his stand up, you know, is, is good and he's got some good things going on there, but you know, the head butts and, and the range that he fights at is it's unique. Um, not nobody's ever done it before. So, um, that was the first thing to jump off the page to me. One thing that is crystal clear about this matchup is that you yourself is much more experienced at fighting all different styles, you know, all guys that come from different backgrounds. Do you think that gives you the edge in this matchup over Leduc? Well, I think it it's every fight is a new fight and every fight your last fight don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> in in most sense, right? Like mm -hmm. Because it doesn't. Uh, every fight's a new fight. The only thing that you can take from fight to fight to fight or from camp to camp to camp is experience. And, you know, fortunately for me, I've been very lucky. I I've had, you know, phenomenal coaches that all had unique styles. Um, I worked with Tom and Arlene Vaughn, who, you know, brought up people like Carlos Condit, Tim Means. I worked with them for a long time. I worked with Robin Rowe for a long time. I worked with uh, Eric Del Ferio and Dominic Cruz. We, we came up in the game together. And, you know, I worked with Dan Brand. I've, I've worked with so many different coaches. But I've worked with all those same coaches for a long period of time here and there. You know, like, I never just, like, never talked to them again or never. So in going to all those different gyms, MMA has grown so much that I've gotten so many different looks from so many different people from all across the world. I mean, at Alliance, it was like it was like a an old school harbor where immigrants were coming in. <laughs> like you know, like there were so many different uh, ethnicities, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in a good way. Like uh, there was so much culture there you know like there was there was so much there was guys from china there was guys from from australia there's guys from switzerland there's guys from germany there's guys from you know all over the place and then you spar and you're getting all these different styles in one day so you know and that's just one gym and and through the years like being on the ultimate fighter they bring dudes from all over the world so you're training from dudes you have a little bit of everything and, um, you know, you've seen all, I've seen, all, I've seen a lot of different looks. I've seen a lot of things work. I've seen a lot of things that don't work. And, you know, I, I feel like, um, I feel like I'm at a point in my career where I can exploit and use some of them tools that I've learned. And, you know, I, I definitely feel like, uh, the MMA has grown so much and so fast that it's helped me because of just the, like I said, like there's so many, I've learned from so many different good people and, you know, that that experience definitely helps you get in different looks from different guys every day or every week in a really tough environment. Like when you're sparring, you know, and you got dudes coming coming in from other countries or whatever, and it's their first day sparring. You get just as nervous going into that sparring session as you do a fight, uh, you know, because <laughs> it's pretty much a fight, you know. So uh, I definitely feel like it's 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 helped me and gave me a huge advantage. Yeah, I think it'll open this one. You mentioned the headbutts earlier. You know, who can prepare for that? It's like, what are you gonna do? Go out and get in street fights, you know, every night and and test yourself against the headbutts. But have you had anybody come in? Have you had uh, somebody with a Lethway background come in and help you a little bit pr to prepare for? I've worked. Uh, I've asked do I've asked guys that have a 
you know, a lot of Muay Thai experience. <clears throat> um, and, you know, a lot of it's positioning, too. Like, you know, if you could put your body in position to land uppercut or a hook, it's kind of the same mechanics um, with landing a, a, a headbutt. It, it's almost uh, – but there's definitely an awareness thing that, that when I – when I took this fight and I'd, I'm sparring, I break in, in a time or be on the on the ropes or in the cage or whatever working, and I'm like, whoa, because I never even thought of those. <laughs> so, you know, there there de is definitely like there's an awareness process, um, and yeah, it, if if you're headbutting all your training partners, if you break all your toys, you're not going to have nothing to play with. So. Um, we, we just kind of w w wanted to beat it in a different fashion. Uh, and I think that we had a, a, I think we had a pretty good camp. I think we got a pretty good game plan and, you know, that's the beauty about competing. And, and that's why everybody, no matter what, um, ethnicity or country or, or group you're a part of one thing, every human being on this earth has in common is we all love fighting in some facet, whether it's jujitsu or kickboxing or wrestling or MMA, whatever country uh, or place you're from has something that they like very much. And, and um, that's what's so cool about this opportunity is we're going to we're going to get to go put our skills to the test and, and test each other and see who's best that night. Are you going into this opportunity, you know, thinking that? It's a life-changing opportunity, especially when you when you fight when you fight Dave Leduc, you basically shut down that whole country. Like fifty million people are watching the screen, watching you fight. You go in there, you upset him. You know it could change a lot of things. Is that what you're thinking? No, um, I didn't even think about it on that level at all. Um, I just like like task at hand, you know, like one foot in front of the other um and i'm just looking at two bodies no emotion just two skeletons what does he do good what do i do good how can i exploit what i do good or what i feel i do good on what i feel that he has holes in that's that's all i'm looking at you know um i didn't really put no thought into it i i compete because i love competing i love fighting and, you know, I've had so much fun and I've had such a great experience in MMA as MMA. And I keep saying MMA, but I'm, I'm not only mean cage fighting, but mixed martial arts in general. You know, uh, I know this is kickboxing kind of style, left way. Uh, it's his own thing. But, you know, mixed martial arts has brought me so much. It's, I've, I've met so many people that, you know, every time I get to do it, um, I really enjoy it i try to enjoy the process i try to enjoy the weight cut i try to um, enjoy every part of it and try to do every part of it the best i can because you know father time gets us all you know, father time always wins and i want to always give everything i got to it and because the sport deserves it because it gave me so much and that's just kind of how i approach this one you know i wasn't even thinking about uh what it's going to do after this or anything i'm just thinking about this just thinking about we're competing and and how i'm going to find a way to win and put my skills to the test under pressure you are representing mma in this fight it's uh i don't think he has faced anybody with uh an mma background he's faced like other muay thai you know boxers muay thai specialists other lethway fighters but you're the first and uh, i think that's what makes this matchup much more exciting compared to his previous fights. I agree. I agree. And I think that's that's one thing that MMA doesn't get credit for is Conor McGregor fought the best boxer of all time. But what did he do? He signed the dotted line and he went and competed. And he nobody had to guess anymore because he, he put it on the line. You know, Artem just did it. Um, back in the day, I remember... Don Fry got uh, knocked out really bad in a K1 fight. But no one ever remembers that, you know? 
Uh, Rampage Jackson knocked out a really good K1 fighter. So, I mean, and that's that's what I think so awesome about MMA is, is people are willing to put their skills on the line and people are willing to put it to the test because it's not just entertainment, but it's also like, you know, that's what made MMA explode was the Gracies coming in and saying, hey, mine's better than yours. And when I grew up, there were so many fake black belts. Oh, he's a black belt in karate. Watch out for him, you know? There were so many of those. <laughs> and you never hear that. You never hear anybody throwing, flossing the black belt in karate anymore, you know? Because a lot of them dudes got smoked real bad. <laughs> so, you know, uh, you it's that's what that's what made that's what made MMA so awesome. There was no more like all oh, this dudes and, and and this this dudes this background in MMA and this this dudes this style and it was like oh what is that and I didn't want to learn it you know and uh, I think that was that's what made MMA so great so fast and it's also uh, you know it's something I always always believe in and it's something that I always uh, I think I think MMA people don't get enough MMA fighters and in general don't get enough credit for uh, for being being willing to put it on the line. Definitely, man. Well, you're gonna get your chance, man. In a couple of days, the main event, WLC King of Nine Limbs. You're fighting for the inaugural cruiserweight world lethweight championship. Dave LaDuc, Myanmar. Everybody can watch it on UFC Fight Pass, so they don't have to worry about it. Man, it was great talking to you, Seth, man, and uh, good luck on everything that you're doing and everything in your future. Hey, I really appreciate your time, man. Thank you for always hooking up uh, hooking up media and, and helping the sport grow. Thank you.